Hi, I'm Jeff Baust. I teach in electronic production and design at Berkeley College of Music, and I teach Pro Tools classes with Berkeley Online. In this video, we're going to have a look at creating a tempo map for a Pro Tools session that was not recorded to a click, so that with the tempo track, we can do all kinds of tempo related things like do some editing, create tempo delays, and like so. So let's look at building a tempo map in Pro Tools. In this movie, what we'll look at is creating a tempo map in a Pro Tools session. And this is a really handy thing to do if you wind up working with a Pro Tools session where the music doesn't really correlate to what Pro Tools is thinking about in terms of the tempo of a song uh, via its tempo track. And this sometimes comes up if you maybe record uh, some music where you aren't listening to a click in Pro Tools, or maybe the music was done somewhere else and imported into Pro Tools. Uh, so I have a, a rock song here. It's a pretty good song. And I'll just show real quick that the uh, current tempo of Pro Tools' session has nothing to do with the music. And you can see uh, with this bars and beats display, the music and the actual tempo track of Pro Tools have nothing to do with one another. So I'm going to go ahead and create a tempo track that means something in terms of this music so that I can work with this session in terms of bars and beats. I can use plugins like Delays that might use the Pro Tools tempo track to figure out delay times and quarter notes and that sort of thing. So here I have my tempo ruler, I'm going to show it, and I'm going to change it to be a conductor track. So the idea is that now I can create a, a flexible tempo map because uh, they might change their tempo a little bit as they play. You know, people do that. So here I'm going to start with the kick drum and I'm going to trust that the kick drum is right on time. He is the timekeeper and I'm going to go find the downbeat of the song bar one, which I suspect is right here, but I'm just going to give it a listen. We get a count off. It's right here. Now I can jump and put the playhead cursor right here by using this command tab to transients. And when I have that engage, hitting the tab key will take me from one transient to the next. And it puts it right there where I want it. So now what I'd like to do is tell Pro Tools that's bar one of the song. So I'm going to go here to the event menu and find identify beat. And I'm going to tell it this is bar one just by simply typing a one. And there it is. Now Pro Tools has moved this red diamond, which indicates the first bar of the song right here. And you can see we are parked at bar one. Now I've laid out already with some memory locations that use markers here. I've laid out a map of the song. So this is the downbeat of the first verse. The thing of it is, I don't really know what bar that is because I can't trust these bars because Pro Tools still thinks the song is at 120 beats per minute, but we know it's not that. So what I'm going to do is just listen and I'm going to count bars uh, as it plays and figure out what bar that is. You can... So that's the downbeat of bar five here. So I'm going to hit tab to transient, put my playhead cursor right on that kick drum strike, and I'm going to say, all right, that is the downbeat of bar five. So I'm gonna hit Command I, which was identify beat, and I'm gonna just type in a five right here. And when I do, Pro Tools now says, all right, well, that's the downbeat of bar five. Now notice the uh, tempo ruler display changed from green, where the contents of the ruler were tempo events, to blue. So now the contents of the ruler are bar and beat markers. But it's also figured out that the tempo is just about 90 BPM, just a little less here. Now from here, it'll continue to think the tempo's around 89.7, basically 90 BPM, until I identify the next point, and then it might adjust slightly what it thinks the tempo was between here at bar 5 and the next point that I define. And I'm going to go through the verse to the chorus here. I'm going to assume they play pretty straight, um, although I should probably count some bars uh, as I go. So I think it's all pretty. Here's bar 6. That looks like bar 7, bar 8. See how it kind of lines up? I'm pretty sure this is bar 10 here. I got the you need. Bar 11, that feels pretty good. I might want to just, as an interim thing, say, well, because this tempo is maybe a little off from what they're really playing, I should just identify this as exactly the downbeat of bar 11. So again, with tab to transients, I've put 
that playhead cursor right there where that kick strike is. And now I want to hit Command I, and we're pretty close here. Um, but I want to just tell Pro Tools this is exactly the downbeat of bar 11. And you can see Pro Tools has adjusted what it thinks the tempo is from bar 5 to bar 11 just a little bit. And that's all right. And you can see it looks pretty good. This probably lines up pretty good. And if I wanted to, I could listen. Obviously, is this really the downbeat of bar 15? 16. It all feels pretty good. If I wanted to, I could listen to the whole thing, but I trust these guys. They're playing pretty steady. That's probably the downbeat of bar 21 here. And that's definitely the downbeat of bar 25 here. That's where the chorus is. And so I've put my cursor there by hitting tab. And I'm just going to hit command I. And we're pretty close. We're just 24 ticks off. But I'm just going to say this is exactly the downbeat of bar 25. And we're off and running here. And again, if I zoom out, you can see we have a tempo map. And we're working at roughly 90 BPM. So the next stop here is the verse. Now I've listened to the song. And it turns out there's something kind of tricky in here we're going to have to deal with. Uh, as the song plays and I'm just going to zoom in a bit more and um, you know this is bar 26 and again it all looks like it lines up and if I played through it it would definitely line up but there's something tricky happening right here that kind of makes life a little uh, more complicated so I'm going to start playing from bar 32. <laughs> And you can hear what the issue is. The issue is there's a funny bar here that isn't 4-4 four, four time. It's something else. Let's go back here to bar 32. And I might even just identify it as being exactly bar 32. It's off a couple ticks because they're people and they're playing. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and identify that. And we're going to try to figure out what's going on right here. And what's happening, which is kind of tricky, is this is not a 4-4 four, four bar. It's actually a 7-8 bar. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 downbeat for the next bar. So that's what happens when we get here. So we got 4-4 four, four bar, 4-4 four, four bar, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and that's the downbeat of the next bar. It's kind of a tricky riff that these guys are playing. So let's count it through. We got 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1. So you can see that it's a 7, 8 bar. So that's a tricky bit right there, but we can handle that. I'm going to go right here and say, well, that's the beginning of that bar. And I'm going to identify that as the downbeat of bar 34. It's only nine ticks off anyway. But I'm also going to say, you know what? Bar 34 was a 7, 8 bar. And that's the tricky part. So I'm actually putting in a time signature in the time signature ruler that says this is a 7, 8 bar, not a 4, 4 bar, just for right here. And I can even show, if I come over here, I can even show the meter ruler here. And you can see now we have a time signature of 7, 8. And of course, this is the downbeat of the next bar of music. Where we get back to 4, 4. So I'm going to use tap to transient. And I'm going to identify that as being exactly the downbeat of bar 35. And at bar 35, we go back to 4-4 four, four time. So it gave me this is the downbeat of bar 35, but also it gave me here in the meter ruler, it gave me 4-4 four, four time. Now I'm going to count through it and we'll hear that it works pretty well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, and we're in business. It's also pretty steady tempo. They don't really deviate that much, just the way, uh, you know, players might. And uh, I'm going to go on to the next verse, and this looks like the downbeat of the verse. Let me just give it a listen. There it is right there. I'm again, tab to transient. I'm going to say this is the downbeat of bar 37. It's just a few ticks off. And I can just go through the song like this. And anytime I find those tricky bits, of course, uh, where they play that riff, I have to think about a 7-8 bar instead of a 4-4 four, four bar like so. So I'll just uh, go ahead now and do the rest of the, uh, the tempo map. 
And so here I finished laying out a tempo map of the song, um, just the, the uh, points of delineation in the song, the verses, the chorus, that sort of thing. And this includes creating those seven eighth uh, bars uh, where those uh, uh, fancy licks are played here. Again, this is coming out of the first chorus. You can lay it on me. They do it again coming out of the second chorus into the guitar solo. So here you go. Take this down the hallway. And then again here at the end, they actually play the lick three times. So there's three bars of seven, eight. And then I put it back to four, four here, even though as you'll hear, it's just the big finish. So it doesn't really have a pulse, doesn't really have a tempo. Like so. So this is probably sufficient for the things I want to do if I just want to quickly navigate thinking in terms of bars and beats and I want to put in a delay, let's say that would use this tempo track to figure out the delay time of a quarter note and that sort of thing. So that's using a tempo map here now to, uh, you know, just help you navigate and manage a session as you're uh, mixing it and uh, it, later on it will give you some options in terms of using tempo dependent plugins like a delay that might let you set the tempo in bars and beats and that sort of thing.